have returned. And let's try this deploy. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Will that work? Will something else be wrong? I don't know. <laughs> Create a new step function and we're delete the old things. Okay. Look, it only took one second to create the step function. Uh, so that should mean if I go over here and I refresh this list. Yeah, there we go. Here's the new one. We can uh, go to the definition. We can see a, a, a much simpler representation. Uh, I mean, it's it's the same thing as the other thing that we're looking at before, but you just don't see the, uh, I guess if we click edit, there we go. And we can see the, the fancier version. And it's basically the same thing because of course what I did was I went over to the code tab and I copied what we had before and uh, dumped it into a file. All right, so success. Four changes, 33 unchanged, 37 seconds. Not too bad. Now there's some cleanup stuff I need to do here to actually pass in all the right parameters um, into here, right? So like instead of hard coding the table name, we have that in a parameter like we do for the Lambda function. Uh, so if we look at this and we look at the um, summarize transcription task, can see here it does have the function name right um, and we just have dollar latest so it says just use the latest version of the lambda which is not exactly what I wanted if versioning is enabled via publish equals true interesting is that something we need to do here Publish true? What does that mean? I guess that means that every time we have a, uh, every time, potentially every time we do a deploy, how does that work? Let's look at the Plumy docs because I want to understand the, the implications of that. Uh, which one? This is the AWS and not AWS native. Layers, file systems, retries. What does it say about publish? Whether to publish creation change as new Lambda function version. Okay, what constitutes a change? So the, the reason you would want this, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do this right now because this is not like a, a production ready application. Um, but if you think about this, like if you do a deploy and you have changes to like, you don't change the step function, but you change how the Lambda works or no, maybe well, like it's complicated, right? Because there, there's this interface between what the step function as kind of this orchestration logic expects. And it's going to invoke this Lambda function and it's going to expect the version of the Lambda that it had before. Right? Uh, so yeah, let's say, let's say you changed, you change the step function to change around the arguments. You, you want to change, you want to remove an argument, you want to add argument, you want to make non backwards compatible changes to how the step, how the step function interacts with the Lambda function. Uh, you also change your Lambda function as well. If you then try to do a deploy and you don't publish 
then the step function, as we can see in the console, uh, in whichever tab that I was using, close some of these tabs, many tabs, you can see it's just referring to latest, right? So if we pushed the, uh, the, the Lambda function, uh, if we updated the Lambda function before the step function got updated, then someone could invoke the step function, someone or something, right? Some process that invokes it uh, and would get the newest version of Lambda, which wouldn't be compatible with this version of the step function. So you would want to have this tied to the specific version of the Lambda that's compatible with its use. Um, so to do that, it seems like we would want to say publish true for this function so that we create actually separate versions. So we publish versions of the function, right? So that's what we see in here, right? Where there are, there are no versions. Um, actually this might be stale now. Let's refresh this there we go. new Lambda. Um, there are no published versions. We just have the Lambda as it is. Uh, which means the only version is just dollar latest. Okay, so we have a plan, believe it or not, from the beginning of the stream. And uh, the plan, we, we started doing this, but we need to finish it. We figured out permissions, I think. Uh, and we need to test sub function with the test input. So let's do that. So if I go back to state machines, I go and I want to start an execution. Uh, so we, we give it a name. There's actually some new nuance here and what the name is for, because there's two kinds of step functions in AWS. There's uh, the standard and express workflows. And so this is a standard type. And one of the implications of that is that the starting execution of a step function is idempotent. Meaning if you give it the same name as an already running execution, it will not start a new execution. Um, yep. So anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, this import. Too. Oh, it imports file. Okay, cool. I don't care about that. Uh, let's duplicate this. And I want to look at step function. Let's go into the editor. So what I ended up doing is I create this pass state. And so I think if I remember right from when I was first learning about step functions a, a few years ago, it wasn't really clear to me initially why this even exists other than, oh, you have to have some state to go to and it's just a pass, right? But why would you need that? Well, what does it do? And really what the pass state is really convenient to do is it allows you to do state manipulation of the state of the step function, right? So when you start a step function, when you invoke it, you execute it like I'm about to do here, there is input. And this, this input becomes the initial state that flows through the state machine, the step function. And then what I can do is I can create a new state like this, and then I can have it using a special syntax read from um, the existing state and transform it, right? So I can set up an object that represents the iterator for our loop. I can uh, essentially think like creating variables uh, for information like how many videos are we processing? Uh, what are they? Like I can pass this through from the initial state into the new state. So this, um, because I've not checked any boxes on the output side, this transformation will become the new state that passes into this choice and then throughout all of this. And hopefully this works. But the reason I'm looking at this now is this tells me exactly what the input needs to look like for this to work, right? So because I'm replacing the initial state, I know that the only state from the input that can be used, whatever I refer to here. So I know I need video keys. Um, and technically speaking, I can put an empty array in here and that is valid. And then I need an initial prompt. So this will be the initial context that's passed to the uh, transcription job. Um, 
I do know that this needs to be, uh, it can't just be an empty string. That breaks uh, something, I think. So I'll just put test there. And again, I get the wrong tab. Uh, so I think those are the only inputs this needs. Um, this is not gonna do a lot, but it, it will be a good initial test. Um, one thing I could consider doing here, I as I uh, probably wanna start thinking about how I could test all of this in practice as I make changes to make sure I'm not breaking things, thinking about like integration style tests of this stuff. Um, there is a thing that if you go back to like the landing page for here, uh, here it is, local development. So this talks about like other resources you can do and all that sort of stuff. But uh, AWS Step Functions Local is like, it's a, it's a uh, Docker image or executable jar that you can run locally. Um, I guess the other thing is that perhaps you can use local stack. Uh, we should test that at some point. And then I could probably write some test scripts that submit inputs to it and check to see what it does. Maybe even interrogate the like the history. So let's let's take a look at what this does. Right? So it's very fast. Uh, here's the execution. It completed before the UI even loaded. Uh, so it's pretty fast, right? Especially for these things where it doesn't actually have to execute anything. It's just progressing through state. So we have our pass step. So here's the input from the start, right? Um, and here we can actually see the step function does in fact have an output. It's like the the state that flowed through and reached the, the end. Um, so it's just that initial transformation from setup state. We have our input and the output from setup state looks like this. So test flowed into this object for transcription context. Video keys ended up here and the count is zero because the array was empty. That flowed into a loop over videos. So the input state here was the output state of the previous one. Um, this doesn't change the state at all. Loop over videos is a choice, right? That looks at iterator index and says, is it, um, is it less than count, right? Uh, zero is not less than zero, so we ended up just going over to success and we were done. So that, that's what happens if the array is empty. We don't even visit this at all. So that, that was a test. If I click new execution, it conveniently gives me the original um, input that I used, and we're gonna do a more sophisticated test. So the way this works is I need a key from DynamoDB for my table. And that will be the video key that we'll pass in. We'll start an execution. And uh, this is potentially gonna do some stuff. It failed, hooray. <laughs> Why did it fail? Attribute name is a reserve keyword, reserve keyword key. Whoops. So the key the partition key for my table is called key. And uh, that means I need to do some more indirect things to make this API call that get item is doing to, to actually work. So let's fix that. Uh, okay, so there's a couple of places where we're calling get item and probably another place where we're doing put item. And then all these things, we are going to have to um, do a thing. Now, what is that thing? I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Oh, here we go. I have the API reference open. Uh, this is where I was looking at projection expression. Uh, but the other thing we need to do, and it's probably an example. Uh, consistent read expression attribute names. One or more substitution tokens for attribute names in the expression. And these are some reasons why you would want to use this. One 
is that to access an attribute whose name conflicts with the DynamoDB reserved word. Key is a reserved word. Uh, so we want to use expression attribute name uh, names in this. Uh, like so. Oops. Somehow I still ended up with a, an extra quote there. Uh, right. And then here, I can do that. Um, and that should be fine. Use the uh, pound sign character and expression to reference an attribute name. For an example, consider the following attribute name, percentile. The name of this attribute conflicts with a reserved word, so it cannot be used directly in expression. Uh, yeah, and then the colon for attribute values is something we saw uh, elsewhere, I think, but uh, I'm not too worried about that. So, Here's a question. Could they have done pound side percentile? Or would that not work because percentile is a reserved word? I don't know, actually. Uh, shall we try with, with hashtag key and see if that's allowed? Uh, let's see, where else are we using key? Also here. So I'll change that to that. So here's where I'm doing uh, another get item uh, and I think there's a one more dynamo dynamo DB all that I'm doing item get, oh no 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 right so what our lambda function you know the the dummy lambda that we created uh, earlier in the stream this one what this is eventually going to do it's going to write to dynamo DB to, to store the results of its interaction with the OpenAI API. We'll see if we actually get that far today, otherwise we'll have some stuff for next stream. Um, but let's find out if we can use key. So first of all, let's look at the reserved words. There are a lot actually. And presumably if we believe the error message, uh, H-I-J, yeah, key is a reserved word. How about that? There are actually a surprising number of reserved words. Um, I wonder why. Interesting. Okay, let's try deploying that. All right, it sees there there was a change to the set function. So we'll update it. Okay. And it's done. So I go back to here. I can just click new execution and we'll try this again. DynamoDB failed. Attribute name is a reserved keyword. So let's take a look at the step definition here. Oh, maybe key here is a problem. I don't know. Let's um, I'm, I'm not willing to give up quite yet on this idea of just doing this as an alias. I'm not convinced that that I, I think that could be a problem. It's not clear to me. So let's Make sure that we're we're testing that properly before uh, giving up on <laughs> before resorting to doing I don't know like pound K or something. Especially because it doesn't take too long to. Uh... Ooh, what does recover do? Interesting. Okay, new execution. Probably that's what uh, recover start new execution does, yeah? Uh, except it doesn't have the state. Right. Uh, new execution start fails again. 
The provided key element does not match the schema. Okay. Um, so that suggests to me that this doesn't need to refer to the attribute name, which suggests that probably we have to do this. Back out that and we'll try this and see if this works. If at first you don't succeed. Okay, there we go. Invalid projection expression. Attribute name is a reserved keyword. Reserved word, keyword key. So that's interesting. Can't, I mean, because I feel like using the alias did not. Okay, maybe it will work. Maybe it really is a case where you cannot use a reserve word even inside of the the expression attribute names. Find out. So we do that. I feel like I've, I've dealt with this before years ago when I was uh, using DynamoDB a lot more than I have of late. But I'm pretty sure that when I created the, the alias, the attribute name, I did not try to put the whole reserve keyword in after the, the pound sign. Um, all right, what's the problem now? The provided key element does not match the schema. Interesting. The provided key element did not match the schema. Uh, is something about this from? Let's, uh, where's the get item API? Okay, request syntax. Uh, oh, I see. No, 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 it should be key is a map of attribute names to attribute value objects representing the primary key of uh, item to retrieve. Uh-huh, simple primary key, you only need to provide a value for the prediction key. Yeah. Right, so key, and then this would be the name of the key. Um, interesting. So save yourself a lot of hassle and do not use a reserved word. Uh, for the name of the key or keys in your DynamoDB table. It's, it's probably the lesson here. It's okay. I'm sure there is a way to make this work. And at least it only takes a few seconds to deploy. Let's try again. All right. We failed a different way. 
Excellent. Okay, so that suggests that the issue was primarily in projection expression. We need to use this alias. And for the key, it just needs to be the name of the key. That feels uh, a little inconsistent, but whatever. Okay, next problem. We're trying to do transcribe audio to text. That's our next step. The parameters. Ba, 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 ba. Could not be used to start the task. The value for the field item key must be a string. Interesting. So if we look at this steps output, we should see an item. Ah, it's encoded, right? It's item because what we're doing and when we get the item from DynamoDB is that we are, we have this in the um, kind of structure that DynamoDB uses to represent things. So it's audio S, key S. Uh, I guess that's fine. I think I'm fine with that. If we just do that, that'll make it work. Where else are we referring to item? Oh, 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 actually we can do one better, right? Because what we do is we go into, so we have a result selector as part of the get item from DynamoDB where we map the value uh, that we get from DynamoDB, which is in this dollar dot item. Uh, and we create an object that we then put inside of the uh, step function state as dollar dot item, but lowercase i, because all of our stuff is this. Uh, so if I just get uh, dot s from key and audio, then this is no longer a problem down here. Okay, where else are we getting item? Uh, when we get context. So yeah, when we get context, we're reading transcription context from the item. Um, and we want to take item trans transcription context dot s. Yes, okay, cool. So that's a couple of issues caught by fixing the by identifying the, the first case. I like the 124 warnings. What's that about? Uh, some older stuff, definitely. Lots of stuff from Clippy complaining about my packages. Many, many things. Yeah. Uh, of these, this is the one I, I care about the most. This function has too many arguments. It's definitely true. Anyway, all right, we updated the step function. Let's try it again. Okay, so now this, this will take a minute, hopefully. Because what's happening, ah, uh, what's happening, <laughs> what was happening is we got the item from DynamoDB and then we'll try to invoke a uh, job in batch, previous batch. But our job definition is not in an active state because we've moved on since then. So this is probably where I want to start threading in uh, some inputs to this component. Uh, so how are we gonna do this? Well, let's take a look at What's that? I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling main uh, and so here's stream ingestion. That's our uh, component. And what do we want to pass in to it? It is going to be the audio transcriber job or something about the audio transcriber job. Uh, you can see this is not actually referred to anywhere else in this file right now. This is kind of a freestanding thing. There's nothing that triggers it because that's what we're building. Uh, so, the transcriber job equals audio transcriber job dot job definition arn. Uh, 
Um, and we also want the GPU batch job queue. So this will give us the job queue that we can use. And in the job definition of the job that should be queued in that job queue. Okay, and so then I wanna add those things to here. Yeah, and that, okay. And currently I'm just allowing this to submit jobs with to, to anything and I'll at some point consider uh, it does not need to be able to invoke any job or terminate any job that exists in my AWS account. Um, I think star for the x-ray stuff is fine, especially for what these things are, putting traces and telemetry records. Um, I think that's fine. Okay, so uh, the other thing I want to do here is I want to add audio transcriber job queue ARN and audio transcriber job definition ARN as substitutions. And then in the step function, uh, let's see, if I just search for ARN, that's likely to turn up the right thing. So here's the job definition. Uh, definition arm that might even be the right thing um, and double check that that uh, over here yep and yep okay so we did this part we do need to add the dynamic DB table you know, if I'm doing this, I might as well add that as well. So we'll do the metadata table is. Uh, I wonder if it makes sense just to pass the whole table. Here. Maybe, maybe. And then that can allow me to like pull either the name or the arm, depending on what I need. Like here, I want to refer to the ARN of the metadata table. And then in our definition substitutions, I refer to metadata table ARN, or probably name. I think we just refer to name here. That is a thing, right? Yes. Okay, so then in our JSON, uh, Dyna, no, oh, I see, yeah, yeah, old word, turn on. Uh, yeah, we need the table name. And so the table name is gonna be that. I think there's one or other, one or two other places, one other place. Yep. So I, I think at this point, everything is parameterized. Let's deploy. Nope. STR object has no attribute. Job Q R. I did something wrong. Somewhere. Uh, maybe in here. Uh, oh right. So. I did something wrong by just accepting what Copilot gave me. Uh, this parameter is actually should probably probably be more accurately referred to as the ARN. And this one as well. And let's make that consistent when we're passing it in. Uh, my thought process here is uh, that at least for metadata table, there's like a standard class 
describing this, but these are kind of more ad hoc things that uh, I made, uh, or not the arms, but you know, they're, they're coming from another component resource that I made. And I might want to change that in the future. And it's just easier to pass through the ARN and have kind of that, have the knowledge of the relationship between these things be defined here. Kind of like, like this be the interface. Okay, so maybe that'll work. there anything else in here where the arn was hard coded uh, for this but uh hmm. yeah i might as well that. i think there's an example of these permissions in the Actually, maybe a main.py? Yeah. So here, here, here's where it has permission to submit job. And it has the job definition arn and the job queue arn. I think potentially. Thinking about the fact that this. I think there's some some nuance there. I'd have to look at exactly what the ARN, uh, like what is the scope of permissions for describe job? Because just providing the ARN of the job definition in queue might not be enough uh, for that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that as is. And we're gonna test this again. How far will we get this time? Okay, so now hopefully it is attempting to invoke our job. So if I go over here and search in the GPU queue, we can see uh, this was a few days ago, but we see we have transcribe audio. It is runnable. Um, so this is actually kind of interesting what it's going to do, right? Because this uh, in our in our um, video ingestion job, the other one we were working on a stream or two ago, that's using uh, Fargate to have AWS provision like compute resources for us on just some server. Like we don't have visibility into, into the underlying like server where, or a VM where uh, that container is running. In this case, this is actually using our GPU, um, our EC2 based GPU compute environment. And this is using uh, G4DN instance types and it's using uh, spot instances, right? So in EC2, I can go over to the spot requests and there we can, we can see created one minute ago a request for a spot instance. And so if I go back to jobs now, this might have been promoted. Yeah, now it's starting. So before it was runnable, but it was waiting on compute resources to be provisioned for it. So we basically bidded on uh, some cheap compute. See there, hey, uh, I saved 66% on um, whatever this was, I think this was maybe our last run from a few days ago. So here's the request, right? So uh, the max price is just the normal instance price for this uh, instance size, uh, G4DNX large, uh, but we'll get a, a cheaper price than that, right? Uh, we won't be able to see that until everything is closed out, but typically, you know, we're getting like a third of the price Uh, and yeah, we don't like that jobs. So this will start. Um, but if I go back here, we can see a past run of this. It only takes like a minute. 
to do the OpenAI Whisper run. I had a lot of failures before I finally got the success. And now we're um, doing it from the step function. So we'll see. Now going back to the execution of the step function. So for a um, standard execution type, there's also a, um, I forget the word, but it's basically a more ephemeral, shorter term execution. Uh, there are a lot of limits on it, but for the standard execution type, this can run, like you can have a step function that processes things and like traverses through the state machine for up to a year, right? So if we had something very long running where we were polling, you could have something where you like send someone a text message and wait for them to text back. All sorts of like request response, asynchronous stuff um, over the course of like a, a year long workflow. You could do that um, with the step function. So it's very flexible, both in how you can plug things into or plug, yeah, plug things into it or plug it into things, but also in kind of the scope of how long it can run uh, reliably without having to like build a workflow engine to, to do all this. And this is what I've been thinking about for the past um, 10 months as we've been doing like a tasking system and chained tasks and all that stuff for Glowing Telegram is why can't I just use this? Um, and we're finally there. Well, we are, we're finally at the point of starting to use this um, instead. So eventually, yeah, it's build. I'll just look that. We don't need to watch that. Um, our Lambda will eventually get invoked and we'll be able to see that. Um, your function doesn't have permission to write to CloudWatch logs. Oh, let's fix that. Uh, I guess an implication of the fact that we don't have versions for our Lambda is that when I add uh, this manage policy, uh, let's see, what, what is what is the actual barn of the policy, please? Oh, it is service role in this case. Well, forgive me for not just trusting Copilot. Uh, and we can we can just update, we can do another deploy. Um, this shouldn't affect the stem function. This will update our existing Lambda. Uh, so it will be able to lo log to CloudWatch logs. So we'll have logging from our Lambda that doesn't do anything. Uh, okay, let's close that, go back to here, uh, or we can look at the job. The job is running. It's been running for less than a minute. It takes about a minute to do its thing. Um, oh, here we go. Here's the log stream. So we can look at the log, the output from the, the, the transcription job. So not a lot, it's just that it logs out. Here's the key that it was given. Uh, here's how many bytes were in the, uh, so don't be confused uh, because of the way I ended up naming things. I just keep the same original file name, but this is the audio file. So this is like a WAV, a WAV file. Um, not a, not a Matryoshka video container. Um, it's just carrying over the same name because uh, I don't like extensions. Okay, so the job is completed. Uh, and if we go back to the step function, uh, we got a failure, but not with the transcription job. That succeeded, right? And we can see in the state output, we can actually see some information about what happens. Uh, so we can see environment variables, interesting. all sorts of things here about the task that was run. Um, which is interesting, but we don't actually do anything with that. Like if I look at the definition of this task, 
We don't, um... Hmm, actually... Maybe we're missing a thing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's happening right now is the output of this task is replacing the whole state of our step function with what, what the result was. So that's a problem. So let's um, go over here and fix that. So if we go to submit job, all we want to do an output here is we want to... Original input to output using result path. Discard results. So we want to do that. So what does that code look like to do that? Say result path null for transcribe audio to text. Uh, where does that live? That's at the top level with like next. Okay. So we can do that. And that will be good. So I'm interested to try something. Uh, if we go back, what does this recover do? What does redrive from failure? I've not seen this before. Redrive the same execution from the previously failed aborted or timed out state using the same input and state machine definition. Seeing the same execution from the step at which it was terminated. Interesting. using the same input and state machine definition. Well, that's not super helpful because what we're changing is the state machine definition. Uh, okay, so never mind. Okay, so we'll have to do a new execution. And that will mean that we'll rerun the same job, but guess what? It doesn't matter because all that job does is it updates the, the metadata table, the item, to update the transcription, right? So like we would have just, it probably didn't change. I mean, maybe technically it could have because what we did here is we provided an initial prompt, right? So um, I wonder I wonder how powerful this initial prompt is for OpenAI Whisper. Uh, take this recording. Uh, transcribe it as uh, Pig Latin. I, I don't know. I suspect this is going to do nothing. Or it may only affect the, uh, the beginning. But I'm curious. Okay. So, again, it's very fast to, like, do the initial states because it's just like uh, just some moving some data internally and then getting an item from Dynamo, DynamoDB can be very, very fast. And then this is going to take a minute. Now, curious about what the results are going to be. Uh, and then hopefully what we will see, uh, the state output will be the output of, um, of, the, of the job. Uh, but the input to summarize transcription should look exactly the same as the input to transcribe audio to text. Um, actually, here's a here's a fun thought. We should probably have the same result path null for the next one as well. Um, output path parameters retry. Yes, like we are not going to care about the results of the lambda at all either. So I'm going to add that to this. Um, updating the step function is not going to have any effect on the running one. Um, because it's already using the existing definition, but, uh, we're, we're ahead of the game slightly for the next failure. In the meantime, uh, while we're waiting for this, it has been somehow almost three hours 
And so I think it's time to maybe look for someone to go and raid. 